Okay, you went through hell when drinking ayahuasca, or you're afraid you might. Or maybe your friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend went and you're trying to understand what happened. So, two things. Number one, most people when they say they went through hell, it means they felt tormented. Maybe they saw some demons, some ugly spirits, a lot of darkness. And to some degree they felt that what they faced broke them in some way. Maybe they acknowledge for the first time the amount of evil that is present in the world. The amount of unconsciousness, let's not call it evil. 90% of the time when people go through hell, they get very scared because they think, oh my God, I'm doing witchcraft or what is this? Or why was this experience so dark? What is there to gain from such darkness? And the truth is that most of the times it's not actual hell they're going through. It's a projection of their inner landscape. Ayahuasca and some psychoactive substances do this where your emotions can make manifest. They can take a shape and form. Why? Because it makes it easier for you to understand things. Because if you think this is me, you think your, your emotion, you think your, your pain, you think your, your mental health complications. If you identify as this, it's very difficult to separate the truth of who you are from the nonsense that you have gathered. So sometimes the plant medicine will put up a drama, a play where you see a lot of things happening, a fight between good and evil or light and dark, and it is nothing but like a holographic representation of your consciousness. It's trying to show you in a very animated manner the dilemma, the confusion, the struggle that goes within for you to learn from it. Now, there are some cases in which people can actually go through dimensions of existence that are of a, I don't want to say lower quality, but that are, all, that are very, very, very dense. And this is what people describe as hell. For many participants, this can be quite overwhelming and unsettling because they don't know what to make out of this. They imagine that ayahuasca is meant to make them feel loving and compassionate and joyful and like they're going to blast into a million rainbows. And it is possible, but not always so because life has both. There's consciousness, there's unconsciousness, there's light, there's darkness. And ayahuasca is not a tool or a teacher that wants you to be happy. She wants you to be free, to be whole. And these are very different things because to be whole means that you have integrated all of who you are, which is your capacity for goodness, but also your capacity for destruction. It means that you have integrated your creative energy as much as your rage. It means that you're able to look at the worst within you and at the worst inside a, another human being and remain in a state of acceptance, in a state of love, in a state of equanimity. This is true freedom. Wanting to always be happy and dismissing the more difficult parts of life will make you unfit to live. It's like going through the jungle and you only want to feel the nice scents from the flowers and you want to see the colorful birds and the beautiful sunset but then you don't want the like torrential rain you don't want to see how the tiger is ripping the head of a gazelle you you don't want to see the worms that are eating the leftovers of that carcass even though it is those worms and that death that nourished the soil for the beautiful flowers it's those worms that feed the colorful parrots that you see in the jungle and the heavy scary rain the ones that give that vibrancy to the leaves to the greens so in life if we want to live fully we must be equipped to welcome all of it not only the part that is comfortable that is nice or the part that we think we want to see that is a very juvenile way to live a very mature way of seeing things only want, wanting to be forever sheltered from everything that is uncomfortable is not freedom you might as well build your own cage where nothing comes in and nothing goes out. So going through hell is an experience that challenges us. And I speak from personal, from personal experience. I struggle a lot with what I saw because I wanted so hard to believe that life was only sunshine and rainbows and fairies and beautiful god goddesses playing. No, that's a part of reality. There's also a part that is ugly. A part where people take advantage of each other, where there's destruction, there is chaos, 
there is abuse, there's rape, there's torture, violence. And my being afraid of that only makes it bigger. But when I do not shrink in the face of darkness, only then can I understand that that, that darkness also lays within me. And I can embrace it, understand it, and through curiosity and acceptance and love, I can integrate it. So I'm never again scared of it and therefore not easily controlled by it or at the mercy of it, which is the way that most people operate. Most of us want life to be so good and so fluffy and comfy that when it gets a little bit rough, we get scared, we hide. We get traumatized so easily. Most people are unfit for life. And this is why somebody calls them a name and suddenly their whole life is over. Going through hell teaches you that darkness is real, but that you do not have to be afraid of it. Who you are is deeper, bigger than all of it. It's the presence, the witness beyond the chaos of existence. Who you are is not the yin, it's not the yang, it's not the light, it's not the darkness. It's not the music with its high ups or low lows. Who you are is the silence beneath all of it. It's the source from which it all springs. And nothing brings a person faster to this realization than going through hell. So if you have gone through hell, I invite you to consider this perspective. If you're afraid of going through hell, I hope that when you're ready, you go through this experience so that it can become an embodied wisdom. And above all, to understand that most of the time the plant is showing us what is within, letting us know how our mind works, how our energies work. The constant struggle that we have between doing what is right and doing what is pleasurable, the struggle between following virtue and following comfort. On one side you want to be spiritual and really go on this path. On the other side, you want to be promiscuous with your sex life. You want to eat poorly. You want to take it all like a joke. You want to live in integrity, but you want to work in a place where you don't feel aligned. It's not going to work like that. Spirituality is a love affair where you must give yourself fully or not give yourself at all. But if you have us, if you have one foot there and one foot here, you're bound to be torn apart eventually. So this is it. I hope it was useful. Once again, if you're thinking of drinking medicine, I invite you to come and do it with us in our temple in Colombia. If you want to go somewhere else, there's an integration and preparation course for ayahuasca that you can join. And hopefully I will see you soon.